keep, uh, keep, keep, yes. we want to keep the formal part of our, or transition to the formal part of our day because we've got a lot of folks who are speaking today. And we are expecting, in addition to Speaker Ferrandino, who just walked in, and will uh, I think he probably has pressing issues, so we'll try to make sure he can speak right away. And we've got um, former Lieutenant Governor and then Senate Minority Leader Sam Cassidy here, and we've got former Senator Polly Baca here, and we're expecting uh, former Speaker Romanoff and uh, uh, Senator Stedman and Guzman. I think that's about it. So we've got a bunch of people who are going to try to talk for about five minutes Jesus. each. And if nobody else has any pressing issues, why don't we go to Speaker Ferrandino to uh, give us a quick... Uh, hey, everyone. Hey, hey. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hopefully everyone's uh, having a good day so far. <laughs> I, I, know, it is early. I got up at 6.15 to do my workout. Um, and it's still dark. I'm not. Yeah, I hate this time change. There's been a bill to deal with that, but it never passed. Uh, it says the sun will come up early. It says the sun will come up early. Yeah, it's amazing how you can do that. Uh, so um, we're, this is my last session. I saw a lot of you at caucuses, so I uh, said this. But first of all, thank you. This is my last year. Uh, and uh, House District 2, which I've had the honor of representing. Now it's a little different than when I started representing it. It used to be most of the west side, and now it's south central Denver. Um, it's been an honor to be able to serve here for seven years uh, and to represent uh, our district down here at the Capitol. And, you know, I, when I was a kid, I always thought, I'd like to get into politics someday, maybe get elected to office for a year or two. Uh, I never dreamed in my wildest dream that I'd be standing as Speaker of the House. Um, and it's been this amazing experience. It's a, it's a great job that's also one of the, probably the toughest job I've ever had, and probably the toughest job I ever will have, dealing with 64 other members who are as headstrong uh, as I am. Uh, it's junior high down there at times, and I am the principal and have to deal with it. Uh, but I do really enjoy it. Uh, this year, some of the biggest issues we're dealing with, uh, and what's really going to start next week, uh, is the budget. Uh, as always, that's the most important thing we do. Uh, how do we spend the 20 roughly billion dollars of tax and fee revenue uh, and federal money that comes into our state? Uh, so that will start to be decided next year, week. We get the revenue forecast. You'll hear from, hopefully, Senator Stedman, who's on the JBC. So he's more powerful than me on that. I used to be on the JBC, so I was more powerful then uh, than I am today. <laughs> At least that's what some people say. Um, and it's going to be really, you know, how do we invest those dollars? The big competing issues are higher education, which we're looking at making a $100 million investment in higher education, the largest increase in, the, in decades. Um, K-12, where we're looking at somewhere between 250 to 500 million dollars increase, uh, and how that is increased and how we deal with that. Are we, um, has, how much flexibility, how much earmarking towards specific needs like English language learners and kids who need to learn how to read. Um, and so all of that is up in the air as we look at the revenue forecast. And then every legislator has bills that they want to, you know, pass that has fiscal notes, anything from childcare tax credits uh, to affordable housing credits to uh, programs, I'm trying to think, uh, see of course at the top of my head. Um, I mean, revamping the child care assistance program, which will cost a significant amount of money. Uh, all these are competing interests. We're trying to figure out how to deal with this. Of course, when we get the revenue forecast, we won't have enough money to deal with all of it. Uh, so the question is, what can we do? Uh, so we'll try and uh, figure that out. Um, it's so far, my legislative session has been quiet in terms of my bills. Okay, over there, else? Um, Maybe health care. Yeah. <laughs> well, last year we spent, spent in Medicaid. That's just my bills a little bit. Everyone forgot about with all the other stuff from last year. Um, but actually, this year I don't have a very huge legislative agenda myself. I've just been too busy trying to deal with uh, the House and the Senate and the Governor's office, but um, you know, a couple things that I'm going to start working on in the next couple weeks. You might hear about a higher ed bill that I'm going to introduce around funding and how we fund higher education, start to pay for actual outcomes, so pay for degrees and make, student, make sure the money's going to students instead of institutions, really a policy-oriented way of funding higher education. 
um, which will be pretty controversial, but we'll see how that goes uh, when I introduce it. Uh, there'll be a couple other things that are coming out that it's a little early to talk about, but you know, the nice thing about being speaker is I don't have to worry about any deadlines because I get to wave all the deadlines. <laughs> my signature waves all of them, so if life is pretty good there. Do you guys have any questions? What about infrastructure spending? So we've the since the floods, I mean, we've put a lot of money into rebuilding the areas, uh, whether it's roads uh, or water infrastructure. A lot of it, a lot of it's. In, uh, th there's, I mean, we have every year, and we don't talk about it a lot, but our transportation budget kind of is off to the side, and I think it's actually really a good way of doing it, because we have a uh, transportation commission who allocates the funds, um, so we don't get into what used to happen down in most capitals, is, you know, I'm going to vote for the project that goes into my district. Um, so we have a, a significant amount of money, it's about a, a billion dollars a year that goes into transportation funding. Uh, we have a, a significant amount of money going to water projects. Um, that will start getting debate in the next couple of weeks uh, on both, you know, anything from uh, storage to <coughs> ditch building to irrigation issues. All of that will be to dams. And how do we deal and keep our infrastructure in world water treatment? Those will all be starting up in the next couple of weeks as we debate. With the additional snow melt that we're going to have, are yeah. we forward looking? Floods and stuff, yeah, I mean, you're going to, with the fires, the areas where there are fire er areas from last year, we definitely, there, and this is a lot of this is at the local level, but the state is working with them on how do you deal with the impact we saw it, uh, in Colorado Springs and Manitou Springs last year as we all focused on the floods in the northern part of our state. Some people forget that before that we had floods in, the, in Manitou Springs that happened because of you know, the, the fact that the trees weren't there anymore, they all burnt, and there was nothing holding back the water, and so we had huge floods down Main Street in Manitou Springs. Um, so how we deal with those is definitely, and we're still going to, I mean, it's going to take several years for enough growth to happen in areas like Manitou Springs to deal with that, so we're working with local communities. I mean, our first 10 bills in the legislature were flood and fire related. How do we give more flexibility to the local communities? How do we give more resources to the local communities to deal with those things? But do we have funds in the emergency? Oh, yeah, we have. Offers and stuff? Yeah, like we, have, with, we have a reserve. Uh, right now, 5%. We're moving that to 6.5%. Um, plus, we have cash funds that we can pull against in emergencies, and that's what we did last year. During the fires, we pulled about $100 million from cash funds, which were, we repaid this year. Um, while we're now in session, because we only need for four months, but the governor has a lot of flexibility, especially in emergency. We gave him more flexibility this legislative session to deal with things like that. Yeah. Are you getting any funding from the national level? Yeah, I mean, we get. There's tons of on the flood recovery. Uh, a lot of the construction on the roads has been done by the federal government. Uh, now we upfront the money, and we pay for, it, and then the feds will come back and reimburse us. Uh, a lot of the local communities, their infrastructure is also being dealt with. Um, what we're doing is dealing with, you know, there's usually a match. So whatever federal funds, the local communities sometimes have to bring up, to get 20%. Some places like Lyons, uh, they don't have the infrastructure anymore to be able to even have the tax revenue to get the 20%. So how can the state step in and fill that 20%? So we've been working with them to deal with that. So it's a lot of federal dollars, which is really good. And, and Congress passed the bill to allow us uh, to uh, to access what there was the Sandy funds from the hurricane on the East Coast. There was leftover funds there, so we're accessing some of those funds into it. Yeah. Is the state able to say, are you in the legislature able to use the term climate change? Because we're going to have a very rapid snow melt. I don't care how much snow there is, and it's going to happen by the end of June at the very latest. You've not met Max Tyler then. <laughs> uh, okay. no, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, our, our side of the aisle, we talk about a lot. The other side talks about a lot, too, when we bring up bills. They just talk about it in a very different way than that. Uh, we talk about it as a problem that we need to deal with. That's why we passed 252 to increase our renewable energy standard and why we look at conservation, why we're, there's a bill on, you know, it's not sexy, but low-flow toilets. It's around conservation, and one of the reasons there is because we know we're not going to both from growth in our state and climate change. We don't have enough water to deal with the, the population, so we need to do conservation. Um, but the other side of the aisle is all about 
well, you, we can't enforce low flow toilets because they're inefficient, which is not true, and uh, it's our freedom, and we can waste water if we want, and climate change isn't something that's real. So we get those debates. It's fine. It's good to be in the majority, I'll say. Actually, I, I will say, I've said this a couple times. I, I was, before I was speaker, I was minority leader, and that was the most fun job in the world. Because you have no responsibility, and all you get to do is just throw bombs the entire time. Um, speaker, you have all the responsibility. So it's, it's a much tougher job, but it's a more rewarding job. Because actually, when we try and do things, we can get them done. We can change things, as we proved last year and as we continue to prove this year. So I need to get back. We're going. I, hopefully, you guys are going to come over to the, to the floor in the gallery. It would be great to have you on the floor, but there's going to be so many people on the floor for the memorial today. So it'll be a, a long but uh, important memorial to you know, honor Ken. I got one year to serve with Ken. Uh, when I came in, it was Ken's last year as majority leader in the Senate. Uh, and he's really lost. And you know, you'll hear a lot of great stories about Ken. Most of you probably know Ken from all his years and activity in Denver. But he um, he's touched a lot of people's lives down here. And I think you'll hear a lot of those stories today down at the well. So thank you everyone for coming.